Hi there, I'm Gant. I'm a clerk at the Madison Public Library. And I'm Carolyn. I'm a librarian at the Madison branch of HMCPL. And we are not there today. <laughs> we are not there today. We are at the downtown branch of the Huntsville-Madison County Public Library. Welcome to Ask a Librarian. And in honor of upcoming President's Day, we thought we would talk about some of the first libraries here in the colonial United States. Mm -hmm. And you can't talk about the first libraries without talking about Andrew Carnegie, who was the patron saint of libraries. That's true. That <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, before we get to that, we're going to talk about some of the other libraries that came along even before him. Mm -hmm. So. The American Library was in Philadelphia, born and raised. On the playground is where it spent most of its days. So when you talk to librarians about what the first library in America is, you will get three pretty contested answers. The first of which is the Library of Company of Philadelphia, which was founded by the Keith Richards of the Founding Fathers, Benjamin Franklin. And it was the first library structure in the United States as we know it. It was a subscription library, member supported, and it was mostly funded by an organization called the Junto, also known as the Leather Apron Club, which okay. was this um, self-described mutual improvement club, which was also founded by Mr. Franklin. It was comprised of business owners uh, from around the area, and its purpose was to share business advice, help each other grow, and uh, talk about morality and philosophy as intellectuals of the time were wont to do. Uh, and as it turns out, that organization also had a big hand in helping develop America's first uh, volunteer fire, uh, volunteer fire, or okay. uh, what am I trying to That's say? That's cool. Volunteer, volunteer fire, fire department. Fire. Okay. <laughs> uh, also the first police force as well as the first public college and uh, public vocational school. And uh, this library uh, mm -hmm. also served as the Library of Congress from the Revolutionary War up until 1800, while uh, the federal government was located in Philadelphia. But remember, kids, even though Ben Franklin did all that, he was never a president. <laughs> America's favorite not president. That's interesting. So it was a subscription library. It wasn't a free library. That is true. Uh, but the next one coming up, which was founded uh, over 100 years later, uh, was the first library in America that was a true free public library as we know it today. It was in the town of Peterborough, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. founded in 1833, and it was, quote, the first institution funded by a municipality with the express purpose of establishing a free library open to all classes of the community. And in fact, it is not only the oldest tax-supported library in the U.S., but in the entire world. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, and it was originally proposed by Reverend Abiel Abbott, and he, uh, and he was, he was very into public literacy. Even before this, he had founded a juvenile library and a subscription library. Hmm. And he proposed, uh, quote, that a portion of the state literacy fund be used for the purchase of books to establish a library free to all citizens of Peterborough. Uh, the state literacy fund had been a fund that was intended to set up a university but did not have sufficient money. So they used it to make a library, which I think is a great idea. I think we should do that in more areas of our life. Like, you don't have the money for a sports arena? Build a park. You don't have the money for an airport? Buy a falconry. <laughs> Love it. And uh, just to put it in perspective, back in 1833, when it was first founded, it had around 100 volumes in it. By 1890, it had 6,000. And then today, it is still in operation. It has over 43,000. Wow. That's, and, uh, yeah, that that's is pretty something. impressive. And then the last answer that people will usually give is the Boston Public Library, mm -hmm. uh, which was founded 15 years later in 1848, though the, its actual founding took a pretty long time. And it was the first free municipal library in a larger community of people. In fact, today it is the third largest, li uh, largest library in the United States behind the Library of Congress and the New York Public Library, mm -hmm. housing over 24 million volumes right now. And a little bit, in, little bit of an interesting history for that. One of the first advocates of the library was a French philanthropist and ventriloquist. Uh, one, I hope I pronounce this right, uh, Alexandre Vatemer. And so, and I just love about that. So, like, remember, in addition to our independence, the Statue of Liberty, Jean-Luc Picard, and Andre the Giant, we have France to thank for helping give us our first metropolitan library. Uh, viva la France. Yes. I also love that, that it was advocated by a ventriloquist. It would be mm -hmm. like, you know, today it would be like creating the first public transport to the moon and being like, oh, that was David Blaine's idea. <laughs> okay. And now we move on to one uh, Mr. Andrew Carnegie. Yes, Andrew Carnegie. So um, Andrew Carnegie's said to be the patron saint of libraries after the Civil War. 
Um, a few people had a lot of money, and he was one of them. He was a poor kid who came from Dunferline, Scotland in the uh, 1860s, and he um, made it big in the steel industry in Pittsburgh. Um, by the 1880s, he had a huge steel empire, and so he was an industrialist, but he was also really big in philanthropy. And he wanted to give most of his wealth away, which he succeeded in doing. He gave away $60 million um, to public libraries over the course of his lifetime. Uh, he funded over 2,000 public libraries across the English-speaking world in Europe and the United States. Here we have about 1,694. And today, um, 900 of them are still in existence, which is pretty impressive. Um, so I thought we'd just talk about some of the interesting libraries that he built. We, um, we were lucky here in Huntsville that one of the first libraries here in Huntsville um, in 1916 was built with Carnegie money. And um, $15,000 was contributed towards this uh, lovely neoclassical building that was here in the old part of Huntsville near the old courthouse. Um, it it um, was in existence till the 1960s when as Huntsville grew and things changed, um, the community needed a bigger library um, and uh, the area became more industrialized with the Redstone um, Arsenal. As you can see, it's a very bustling city. It's a bustling city. Anyhow, um, that library um, was torn down and a new library went up and then in 1986, the main library that we're sitting in was built. Fort Book? Yes, Fort Book. And we have some lovely pictures that we're showing you from the first library, the Carnegie Library. There's a, a picture of the library with the bookmobile and also a, a picture of the first circulation desk that they had. You, you can see the, the period pictures. And then there's a picture of the reading room with the scientists, um, some of the scientists from Redstone Arsenal um, that we're reading, which is really kind of a neat picture. And I want to thank our um, um, library librarian, Chalice, who got us some of this wonderful yes. information. Thank you, Chalice. Chalice, sorry. She actually um, found for us a lovely book to show you. This book was one in, is, was in the original library in Huntsville, which was a law office. It's over 100 years old, and it was printed in 1816. So this is a real treasure. Uh, you can come down here to the main library and tour special collections and see some of this for yourself. Another really cool library was in the DC, which is where I'm from. And it was the first, the oldest library in DC was a Carnegie library. Uh, and it was built with $300,000 of Carnegie money. It's a beautiful uh, Beau Arts building. Um, it's really, it looks like a marble palace. You can see from the picture that will be on this video. And um, it's pretty cool. It is really, really, really cool. If you go down to DC, I highly encourage you to go see it. It was the first desegregated library in DC. And during the Great Depression, um, when people didn't have any money, they would go to this library because it was a feast for the soul. Um, anyhow, two years ago, um, the, the Carnegie Library in DC was sold to the Apple Corporation. And uh, they have remodeled it. They've spent $30 million, and it's now an Apple flagship store. So that's kind of a twist on the yeah, Carnegie story yeah, from yeah. Carnegie to Apple. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm, more, I'm more focused on, library, on the library to store part. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go buy your iPhone at the Apple Carnegie Library. Sure. Um, <laughs> they, they, they also have programs. Um, it's an art gallery, and um, it's... Does, has all sorts of cool events there as well. Um, just some fun facts about the Carnegie Libraries. Uh, back in the day, men and women had to sit in se separate sections. They couldn't sit together. Also, if you wanted to get a book, it, they had what was called a closed stack system. So you would need to go up to the librarian and ask her for the book, and he or she would go get it. Um, the first open stack system was at the one of the Carnegie Libraries in Pittsburgh later on in the 19th century. So anyhow, those are just some of our fun facts for you all today. And um, if you're traveling in the United States or in Europe, definitely um, go visit some of these beautiful libraries. They're pieces of history. And um, one of the things that uh, Andrew um, Carnegie said was, 
the man who dies rich dies disgraced. And that's his philosophy on life and part of the reason why he gave away so much that he did. Oh. Thank you for joining us today for this episode of Ask a Librarian. If you like this content, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Wink. <laughs>